See the fact that uh, I did not get a chance to speak. It's very disheartening. I had wished that I could actually raise the concerns of my people, the pain and the maladies of my people. Manipur is bleeding, Manipur is weeping, Manipur is, uh, you know, in deep, deep trouble. You know, I had uh, approached, but then I was advised by some of my friends that uh, mm. uh, our Grihamantriji will be speaking about Manipur. Mm. And so they don't want any of the uh, MPs from the coalition mm. to speak about Manipur. Any of the MPs from no, from Manipur? No, both Manipur and also neighboring neighboring uh, states. Hmm. The state law enforcing agencies, they were not proactive. They just remained as, you know, spectators, mute spectators. They were not acting in any form. So, which is why the violence escalated. The uh, law enforcing agencies were also seemingly, as alleged by the cookies, that they were also leading the mob together with the, the various militia forces that were there. In democracy, we feel that whether it is good or bad, whether there is criticism or not, mm. the government must be open to listen and then to respond accordingly. But if they want to listen to only the good part mm. and then criticisms they don't, I think mm. it is uh, hurting democracy itself. Had the government come and intervened in time, mm. however hard the action may be, if it was intervened in time, maybe not so much, so many lives would have lost, maybe so, not so many houses would have been burned, maybe not so many uh, villages would have been destroyed and burned, maybe not so many churches would have been destroyed. Mm. You know, it is very, very unfortunate. The whole scene became uh, something, it was a horrendous gory. But you don't agree with the Home Minister's assessment that since Chief Minister is cooperating, there's no question of replacing him or no question of uh, imposing President's rule in the state? I tell you that the people of Manipur, particularly those from the Kukizo community, they have completely lost faith in the Chief Minister. Mm. The 10 MLAs, they have lost faith in the Chief Minister and then they have moved out of the state. And then uh, they are not going to cooperate with any peace mission that the government is uh, initiating mm. so long as the chief minister is in place. Mm. And so when such type of things are there, mm. uh, that that sense of being cooperative does not make sense. Mm. Of course, BJP has the absolute majority. Mm. And so they don't really need anybody else. Mm. But because of various political compulsions, mm. uh, we also became part of the alliance. Mm. And then uh, we had hope that some good things will happen in their lines. You know, in, in a democracy, we I only hope mm. that uh, things will move. Uh, when you become a member of parliament or a legislative assembly, you will be heard. Mm. But then they will hear only those that are your friends more. Mm. In parliament, Prime Minister Nandan Modi devoted fewer than 10 minutes in his two hour long speech on Manipur crisis. The fact that this is a human issue, the fact that this is hurting people, hearts are being broken, mm. houses, homes are being torn apart. Mm. You know, this requires a personal touch. This requires a healing touch. Mm. He should come and feel the emotion of those people who are crying, wipe away their tears when they're when they are bleeding, try to uh, touch their wounds and then see, bring about healing to their, to their hearts and the, the, to the wounds of the people. Mm. You know, this I had expected, but he dwelt on that I think he missed out that part, mm. that human human touch. Mm. If elections were ha were to happen today, yeah, would he would he escape Manipur? Whether it is election season or not, mm. I think in and out of season, mm. we expect a good governance from mm. a good party, mm. a party that has love and affection for the people, to come and work in and out of season. The central government, they want peace, mm. we want peace, Nagas want peace, mm. Maites also do want peace, mm. Kukis also do not want to continue on with this conflict. They want peace, mm. but the center must make a conducive atmosphere so that mm. peace will prevail. Last week we witnessed heated discussions in parliament on the Manipur conflict. Opposition leaders, including Rahul Gandhi, attacked the government saying Prime Minister Narendra Modi has murdered Bharat Mata in Manipur. Modi in reply said India is with Manipur. 
Amid this, there was a shock revelation by a Lok Sabha member from Outer Manipur, which includes hill districts. The MP from Naga People's Front alleged that he was advised by the BJP not to speak in Parliament on the Manipur issue. We have with us Outer Manipur MP Loro Fose. Mr. Fose, welcome to News Laundry Interviews. Thank you so much. It's nice to come to you. Uh, my first question is regarding Parliament. You said you were not allowed to speak in Parliament, in Lok Sabha. Had you been given an opportunity to speak, what would you have said on the floor of the House? See, the fact that uh, I did not get a chance to speak, it's very disheartening. I had wished that I could actually raise the concerns of my people, their pain and the maladies of my people. Manipur is bleeding, Manipur is weeping, Manipur is, uh, you know, in deep, deep trouble. For a long time, uh, since the conflict started in May 3rd, we have thought that the government of India will immediately do something. But somehow it was not happening. It, uh, they were silent. Uh, of course, I had contacted the Union Home Minister and immediately he was good enough to act immediately. The very next morning, uh, he ordered for the central forces to be flown into Manipur. And I think uh, somehow that was a semblance of, uh, you know, confidence that was being built up. But, you know, the state law enforcing agencies, they were not proactive. They just remained as, you know, spectators, mute spectators. They were not acting in any form. So, which is why the violence escalated. The uh, law enforcing agencies were also seemingly, as alleged by the cookies, that they were also leading the mob together with the, the various militia forces that were there. They were leading the mob and then going and attacking the, uh, you know, cookie colonies, uh, which I think in some cases we have seen even in uh, uh, videos, which seemingly is uh, apparently true. Uh, you know, when such type of things were happening, it became a little difficult for uh, the other group also just to remain quiet. But in the Infa Valley, the cookies were unable to react in any way. And so, you know, when the mob was let loose, you, you know, it, the crisis, the violence went to such an extent. It became so, the magnitude was very high. And then it, is, it spread over all the valley areas. Hmm. And so, which is, which is why the, the, uh, that, being, that being so, it became difficult at a later stage to, for the, even the central forces that had arrived in large numbers, uh, the difficulty to control. The mob was, uh, there was no command. The mob was going at their will, their wishes. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. And so when finally, when uh, the union home minister also, uh, he also in person, he came later in the month. And uh, by then it had gone spread far and wide. The deep wounds were becoming deeper and the killings were unabated and uh, many, many, you know, had fallen to guns and to violence and to various types of killing mm. atrocities. And so which is very un unfortunate. And that is where uh, we felt that the government must do immediately soon after the Union Home Minister arrived. I was very happy at least that we have a man here who is in authority to come and control. But, um, you know, in spite of his being in Manipur for three days, and then the Union Minister of State for Home, he was already there before the Union Home Minister came. Uh, he, in total, he was more than uh, there for more than three weeks. I think in spite of that, somehow, the whole thing could not be stopped. Uh, spurts of uh, violence and you know, attacking each other, they continued on for, and this has continued until now. Now it's more than a hundred days, and uh, it was very sad. So probably whether they had waited until the parliament session came, but when par parliament session started, we thought that things would become good. 
But just a day before the parliament session started, there was this viral video that came in, wherein uh, the two women were paraded naked. They were taken around, they were molested, and then they were ultimately ma mass raped, gang raped. That's what we hear. And, uh, you know, many unhappy incidences happened. And then this video, which was apparently taken on the 4th of uh, May. May itself, somehow it was kept like that. So who kept it and why they did not allow it to come into public domain, that also we don't know. Yes, we understand that the internet was down, but however, it came to light. You know, I'm sure that the, the law enforcing agencies, the, the intelligence uh, forces, they were also aware of this type of things happening, but no actions were taken. And when it came, became viral, then it incited many more un, unpleasant you know, reactions from various sources. And then it was, it did not just necessarily confine to the state of Manipur, it went outside the state. And then, you know, the name of the state also, uh, until the fourth, until the third of May, it was good. The state had, you know, from a time when it was really down, down there, it was being lifted up because of all the developments, because of all the activities that were going on, the name of the state was going up. But at that point of time, it just, slide it down. Mm. It is very unfortunate. Why we have to be faced with such a situation? Mm. Then it went international and we have known the various uh, European parliaments and then various other inter uh, international agencies including UN uh, bodies and all they had spoken out much against the country. It is a miss, uh, you know, it is a very very unfortunate thing. Had the government come and intervened in time, mm. However hard the action may be, if it was intervened in time, maybe not so much, so many lives would have lost. Maybe so, not so many houses would have been burned. Maybe not so many uh, villages would have been destroyed and burned. Maybe not so many churches would have been destroyed. You know, it is very, very unfortunate. The whole scene became uh, something, it was a horrendous gory. You're saying had, had the government intervened, you're talking about the central government or the state government? Both, both. Hmm. The, the state government was unable to do it. Hmm. And uh, so definitely the intervention of the central government was very, very necessary, absolutely necessary. Hmm. Though they said that the law and order, it is in the hands of the state, but because they're unable to control it. I think it is only pertinent that the government of India, the central government comes in. But uh, you're saying one of the concerns you would have raised in parliament is the alleged complicity of law enforcement agencies uh, in, in violence. But Absolutely. Home Minister Amit Shah in parliament, he said, Biryan Singh, Chief Minister of Manipur, he's cooperating with us. There is no question of president's rule. But Home Ministry has reposed faith in Biryan Singh. But you're saying law enforcement agencies, they were part of the mob and they were going on destroying homes. Or yeah. Now, sometimes it is very contradictory the way it is being reported, even uh, in the part, what is being reported in the parliament also. Mm. Mm. You know, Biren Singh himself mm. in the, in one of those videos or one of the channels, mm. he had said that the low uh, intelligence, there was failure of intelligence. Mm. There was failure of law and order. Mm. Meaning failure of intelligence lead to law and order. Mm. And so when he has accepted this, he has own responsibility over that area. Mm. When uh, saying that everything was cooperating, sometimes we are made to think, mm. you know, when the arms and ammunitions were being looted from the armory of the state police force, mm. when many police stations were raided and when their arms were taken away, mm. you know, uh, I think it is as many police stations in the, in the, uh, plain area in the valley and also at the foothills. They were raided, their their weapons were taken away, their ammunitions were taken away. When those type of things are happening, mm. I know the question comes whether when he, the when the HM says that CM is cooperating, mm. whether uh, he was doing at the behest of the center. Mm. You know, that sort of a question comes. I hope it is not so. Mm. Maybe the Union Minister, Home Minister could have, by slip of tongue, he has mm. missed out a few things. Maybe, I hope it does not. But, you know, it creates this type of doubt in the minds of people. Mm -hmm. And so, that is... But it. you don't agree with the Home Minister's assessment that 
since chief minister is cooperating there is no question of replacing him or no question of uh, imposing president's rule in the state so it is for the authorities concerned hmm. to judge whether he should be kept or not be kept hmm. but then i tell you that the people of manipur particularly those from the kukizo community they have completely lost faith in the chief minister hmm. the 10 mlas they have lost faith in the chief minister and then they have moved out of the state and then uh, they are not going to cooperate with any peace mission that the government is uh, initiating mm. so long as the chief minister is in place mm. and so when such type of things are there mm. uh, that that sense of being cooperative does not make sense mm. you know cooperation should come from all angles so that uh, the accommodation should invite everybody mm. with an open heart to say you know if somebody is sorry let them genuinely say sorry mm. and talk about it but he has not even said sorry mm. and then he has not even you know taken active roles whereas uh, you know whereby people uh, trust the government mm. you know, they suddenly the the government will issue an order that from such and such date the schools will open mm. or the ho- the government officers will open mm. and then you know things like that and then if you don't come there will be no pay no work no work no pay and then again when uh, you know the examination people who are coming for examinations their attendance is important their being able to learn is important you know when they are not considering the the losses of the other students mm. who may have gone out of the infall valley mm. uh, who, who are actually waiting for some relief some sort of uh, an encouragement and then some maybe special arrangements needs to be made the state government on their own they never did anything mm. and so when those type of things continue mm. uh, the trust of the people is absolutely gone mm. they had hoped so, that something will be there in essence he seems to be a partisan minister who represents only one community see at one point of time i had even told him sir you are such a great person you are you are so dynamic you are you know uh, you are forceful mm. you are powerful in many ways but you cannot be just the chief minister of a community mm. you have to go beyond mm. you are talking against some other communities and then then they feel that uh, you know they say that he is partisan and so they will not like to listen so you have to be accommodative mm. but somehow it has gone on like that until now mm. and the union government also have a full faith in him and that is the sad part i'll come back to parliament the question of parliament you said you were advised who advised you to not speak in parliament and could you take our take our viewers to the conversation that you had with any bjp leader who advised you not to speak see uh, you know i will not name any names but because we are part of that coalition hmm. the coalition expects all of its members to be cooperative with the government and then to share the same views that as the government hmm. but then at this point of time when in the whole of that parliament session that began on the uh, in the beginning hmm. uh, and then until that time when the the no confidence motion took place hmm. uh, yes from the from the opposition side they were shouting about manipur hmm. left and right hmm. i had also put in a lot of questions uh, for uh, to the to the uh, uh, ministries Hmm. the concerned ministries home and then also tribal affairs education and things like that. many where whereby the students are being affected law and order is at stake hmm. and then you know a lot of other issues pertaining to that hmm. so all of these questions out of which only one was picked up hmm. so not not a single question was being answered one hmm. was put up in the start question and then it was about education hmm. you know the more important thing the more uh, things that are actually um relevant at that point of time would have been law and order mm. would have been this violence mm. how to contain mm. so, but since that was not coming i, f- I felt very bad mm. but at least i thought that at the time when the law the no confidence motion was being discussed mm. i will get a chance to speak but then somehow that was also not to be mm. you know, i had uh, approached but then i was advised by some of my friends that uh, mm. uh, our grahamantri ji will be speaking about manipur mm. and so they don't want any of the uh, mps from the coalition mm. to speak about manipur any of the mps from no, from manipur 
you know, both Manipur and also mm. neighboring mm. neighboring uh, states. Mm. You know, the there was one uh, of our Rajya Sabha member from Mizoram. Mm. He got a chance to speak. Mm. Yeah, it was good that he was given a chance to speak. Mm. But however, uh, his mic also was put off. Mm. So he was not able to elaborate what he meant by whatever he was trying to say. Mm. So it would have been good. In democracy, we feel that whether it is good or bad, whether there is criticism or not, mm. the government must be open to listen and then to respond accordingly. But if they want to listen to only the good part mm. and then criticisms they don't, I think mm. it is uh, hurting democracy itself. Mm. Uh, but when uh, one of your friends said, Garamantri ji will be speaking on Manipur issue and you should keep quiet. What was your response to that? Friend said, of I have my people who are directly suffering. Uh, the wh Whoever are suffering, whoever is bleeding, whoever are crying, mm. whoever are hurt, whosever hearts are broken, mm. whosever homes are broken, whoever lost lives, mm. they, most of them belong to my constituency. I must speak out. Mm. I said, Dr. G, I think it is just listen. So anyway, I went and uh, I went and personally met uh, some leaders mm. and I asked them, uh, they just nodded and then my name was never called out. So, mm. so unless unless we are given a chance, mm. unless we get a time slot, mm. we cannot speak. Mm. It is not like out in the open, we just shout around. No, mm. So that is there. Mm. Your party, Naga People's Front, is an alliance partner with NDA. Uh, BGP led NDA. NDA stands for National Democratic Alliance. Right. Uh, does it also stand for upholding democratic value of dissent, considering that you and MP from Manipur was not given that space. See, uh, the fact that we became a partner to this alliance, mm. um, ever since we became a member, there used to be NDA meetings mm. where policies were never discussed, mm. where, where maybe sometimes we want to push up, put mm. up some views. Mm. Those are being heard and then I don't know what they do with those, uh, whatever we speak. Mm. But then uh, we, we have a closed door meeting mm. and so which is good. Mm. But otherwise, uh, there is no common program or uh, the alliance, uh, you know, the, the the format on which alliances are being created, mm. that is also not there. Mm. Of course, BJP has the absolute majority. Mm. And so they don't really need anybody else. Mm. But b because of various political compulsions, mm. uh, we also became part of the alliance. Mm. And then uh, we had hope that some good things will happen in the alliance. Mm. So that is how it is. What political compulsion can trump over people's concerns. See, because they're in parliament, you're representing Manipur. Yeah. Out of Manipur, hill districts, most affected areas. See, as you say, that I belong to the Naga People's Front. Mm. Primarily, I represent the Naga people. Mm. Then I also represent the tribal people mm. whose concerns are very, very much on top priority mm. with me. Mm. And so, because of those things, you know, in, in a democracy, we I only hope mm. that uh, things will move uh, when you become a member of parliament or a legislative assembly, you will be heard. Mm. But then they will hear only those that are your friends more. Mm. And so because of which, uh, because the Naga people as such, we have got our own various issues. Mm. Then the tribal people, we have our various issues mm. and this needs to be aired. Mm. And so. You know, when we are unable to air them in the parliament, inside mm. the house, mm. because the the house, how it functions, you, you also know it. Mm. And so we cannot uh, air all our concerns in the house. Mm. Outside that, that parliament, we have got this other forum mm. where as an NDA partner, mm. uh, we could come and join and then share our views. And so did, did this but becomes these views an are behind closed door, right? These are not recorded. Hmm. Yeah, these are not recorded. But in parliament, but are, everybody will be watching. Yes, though. yes. But uh, you know, in these houses, the the highest authorities in the government, hmm. they are also always there. Hmm. And so it be gives us a very closed door, uh, maybe person to person interaction, hmm. uh, which are necessary and which are good. So hmm. which is why, yeah. Hmm. I just wanted to know about the the space for dissent from regional parties, is that space there in NDA government? See, my some of my friends, uh, they have uh, expressed that uh, we will vote against this motion. Hmm. Uh, if you're uh, we, referring we, to Mizo National Front, Mizo the Rajya Sabha MP, he spoke. No, no, he also spoke hmm. and then also the Lok Sabha member also, 
he didn't speak, but he also said he will vote against mm. uh, for the motion. Mm. And so like, uh, but that was only in that particular issue. Yeah. Uh, but not for other things. Mm. So like uh, when I spoke out also, mm. may not be inside parliament, but w when it was outside parliament, I also felt bad that such a thing would happen. Mm. See, irrespective of whether this government has been ruled by BJP or Congress or any other party for that matter, mm. if such an issue comes, mm. I think those who are representing that particular people, that pe particular people group and area region mm. should be given a chance. Mm. But somehow, it was not given. So that is why I'm unhappy, hmm. not satisfied. You mentioned about uh, Mizoram, uh, Mizoram MP, Rajya Sabha MP. Yeah. Uh, so people from, I spoke to people from your constituency also. They are saying if, uh, if Vanala Vena could speak in Rajya Sabha, go against the NDA, because MNF is also an alliance partner with NDA. Yes, yes, yes. Why not uh, Mr. Fose? See, that is the issue. Uh, Vanal Vena, mm. he was given a chance to speak, mm. whereas Mr. Fozzi was not given a chance to speak. Mm. See, even if I shout mm. uh, when my mic is not on, mm. it is not going to be recorded. It will not be seen. It will not be heard. Mm. You know, that's that is the our democratic parliamentary system mm. in our country. So mm. maybe the common people they really do not know the issue behind. Mm. I know they are frustrated. They are not happy that I was not able to speak. Mm. It is only right because, mm. but uh, you know, the circumstances leading to my not speaking was mm. not understood by them. Mm. In Parliament, Prime Minister Narendra Modi devoted fewer than ten minutes in his two-hour-long speech on Manipur crisis. And on the face of it, it seems like his remarks, his remarks seem rhetorical, uh, perhaps lacking substance. And 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 after this video came out. He broke his silence after 79 days. Uh, he has not visited Manipur so far. Uh, how do you see his remarks on Manipur? And do you think if this was an election season, he would still stay away from Manipur? I really do not know his mind. Hmm. This is one thing that uh, it keeps us confused. Hmm. You know, Manipur has been in the heart of India, hmm. of this even this NDA. Hmm. Uh, you know, it is the when the government converted the look east policy into act east policy mm. the route was going to go into the southeast asian countries was through manipur mm. and so we were very happy i'm sure the government was very focused on the development of manipur mm. and which is what we have actually seen on ground and new roads are being built ro old roads have become so improved and mm. it has become so good air connectivity has become good a lot of development activities have taken place and we are very, very happy. However, in this particular context, mm -hmm. when, um, when the Prime Minister failed to speak mm -hmm. for Manipur, you know, before the, 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 the intention of the Prime Minister is very clear, we know. Mm -hmm. He has so much of concern. Mm -hmm. Before the violence broke out, mm -hmm. almost every week, two, three ministers will be visiting Manipur mm. uh, for many months be before this incident happened. Mm. And so we knew that he had a focus. Mm. He had uh, an intention to develop and then that this will become the gateway to Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So we were very, very happy. We are happy. Mm. But when violence broke out, suddenly not a single visitor from the, from the ministries. Mm. I mean, none of the ministers came. None of the BJP leaders came excepting for uh, Dr. Ranjan, I think uh, he being from that local, representing the local populace, he had visited once or twice. And that too, you know, his house also was burned. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of things were happening. So because of which maybe now he has also not visited for a long time now. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, until the, that uh, the Home Minister visited and he was there for three days, mm -hmm. it's, you know, in all in all good sense, I think that is the longest where a uh, home minister would come and stay. Mm. Then the minister of state was there for more than 20 days. And I think these are records mm. which are very good with an intention to really broker peace and bring some some sense of, uh, you know, uh, security to the people. Mm. But when the prime until until that time also, we have not seen violence stop mm. the looting of 
armory were still continuing on, mm. maybe to a le in a lesser extent. Mm. And then burning of houses and, you know, all this type of violence, they were still continuing. Mm. Was bad. We had only hope that the coming, the prime minister speaking out and the prime minister, if he can come to Manipur, mm. all of this mm. will be put to rest. Mm. We, I have absolute faith and hope in the prime minister and that he will do something. Mm. But when he spoke out, even in the parliament, mm. Yeah, it is very unfortunate. He spoke about the development of whatever development he has brought to the state and also to the Northeast. Mm. He dwelt much on the developmental aspects of the Northeast, which is good. Mm. Uh, we know that there is no other uh, in the past mm. governments that have actually done what he has done. Mm. It is good. Mm. But the fact that this is a human issue, the fact that this is hurting people, hearts are being broken, mm. houses, homes are being torn apart. Mm. You know, this requires a personal touch. This requires a healing touch. Mm. He should come and feel the emotion of those people who are crying, wipe away their tears when they're when they're bleeding, try to uh, touch their wounds and then see bring about healing to their to their hearts and the, the, the wounds of the people. Mm. You know, this I had expected, but he dwelt on that I think he missed out that part, mm. that human uh, human touch. Mm. So I think anyway, we still are looking forward that he will come. Mm. Um, uh, parliament is, uh, is over. I'm sure he is busy doing whatever he is doing. I'm sure he'll come one day mm. and then he will bring about healing. But when it is late, mm. the longer it is delayed, mm. it will have not a very good impact. Mm. Mm. No, the last part of my question, like, do you think if this was an election season, Prime Minister Narendra Modi would stay away from Manipur? I don't know. Now we, we still have about uh, eight to ten months before the elections. So it if is elections were, ha were to happen today, yeah. would, he, would he escape Manipur? The way it is, maybe, I don't know. Hmm. Uh, see, very frankly, even the BJP leaders, workers there in the state of Manipur, they are not happy. Hmm. You know, the... the not primarily against anyone, mm. but that the violence is continuing, peace is not being brought, harmony is not there, mm. and people don't seem to care. Mm. You know, we feel left out, we are neglected. Mm. You know, that sort of a feeling is there. Mm. And so there are many people who are saying, oh, next time we'll not vote for BJP. So like, whether it is election season or not, mm. I think in and out of season, mm. we expect a good governance from mm a good party, mm. a party that has love and affection for the people to come and work in and out of season. Mm. Even you, you have to go to your people to yes, seek re-election. Yes, I have re -election. to go to my, to my people also. Mm. I have to seek. See, the fact that we are in alliance, it is also impacting upon us. Mm. It is very difficult. See, in, in my home state, uh, when I go back to Manipur, uh, we, we are always given security. Mm. But security are the arms that be, that were given to the security personnel, they're all withdrawn. Mm. They are told to be deposited in the battalions. Mm. And so now when I went back home, none of my security people had any arms. Mm. And then many of my many of my uh, security personnel mm. belong to the Meti community mm. and I belong to the hills. Mm. And so I this Meti, Meti's security mm. personnel, they will not dare to go to the hills. Mm. So that is the tragic part. Are you concerned about your security too? Yeah, you never know what happens. You know, in a mob, mm. in a state of mob affairs coming like that, mm. what will happen? Who will react in what way? You never know. Mm. So it is something, it, it does Because one of the concern. cookie MLAs was almost lynched. Yes, he was almost Outside lynched. Chief I had gone president. and visited him and I feel mm. very, very sad. Mm. He is a close friend. He was a neighbor mm. to me when we were together in mm. Imphal. Mm. Then the way when I saw him, it was, it brought tears to my eyes. Mm. It is really very sad, very sad. Mm. He has lost much of his memory. He is mm. unable to move. Uh, mm. His mobility has been cut off. Mm. So it is very bad. Yeah. Uh, in Manipur, the fight is between the Metis and Kukizo community. Nagas have so far maintained distance in this conflict. However, there are there were few instances where it seemed that Nagas, few instances where Nagas were roughed up. One Naga woman was also killed. Uh, do you think the longer this fight goes on between Metis and Kukizo community, the harder it will be for Nagas to stay neutral? See, I only hope that uh, people don't instigate hmm. 
the other party. You know, there, there are so many of provocations going on in mm. all aspects. Mm. You know, whatever has happened in the past, mm. I think it was mistaken identity. We are told that the whoever that lady was, mm. she had told them that she was a Naga, mm. but she was, you know, whatever was done was done. Mm. But since she is not alive, we really do not know. Mm. We only hope that she had tried to and then misunderstanding mm. took. But then, you know, this type of, if, if, when there is a mob attack, mm. uh, there will be some people who will not listen, who will just do what they are out to do. Mm. And so it happens. And so these type of things, I hope it doesn't happen again and again. Mm. I hope that um, Nagas do not, Nagas have been mature enough not to actually get into this position. Mm. Uh, but uh, I never know. Mm. But this is not the first time that people from two ethnicities are engaged in war. Uh, in the 90s, Nagas fought against Kukizo community. I mean, the common theme among all these uh, uh, these conflicts is fight for space, space in politics, space in administration. Uh, people want land. When my colleagues and I uh, visited Manipur, we saw bunkers, barricades from both sides. Uh, it seems that geographical boundaries have been unofficially earmarked. Has the situation reached a point of no return in Manipur? See, uh, sometimes because of insensitivity of the government, mm. uh, these things have come. Mm. You know, the the division, uh, the division between the Maitais and the tribals, mm. or the Kukis and the Nagas, mm. the Kukis and the Maitais, mm. the Maitais and the Maitai Pangans. Mm. You know, all these uh, differences have always been there over the years. Mm. It has been there over the years. And then in, in a community, when it turns, anything when it turns into a communal thing, mm. when a Naga boy is hurt, they say, eh, Nagas are being hurt by cookies or Maitais, then, mm. then it turns, tends to turn communal. But then when I'm hurt, mm. say that I'm hurt by you or by someone, when it is individualized, then it becomes, it is small. Mm. But the government fails to see that. Mm. Government should, no, not that uh, government is playing politics between various communities, mm. but then they know that there are reasons for why these communities are not uh, able to get together. Mm. And so when the government acts accordingly, when there is developmental deficits, when there is developmental imbalance, when there are certain things that are going on because of employment, because of this, that, you know, when all these differences are being seen, if the government is sensitive, they should act. Mm. And they can placate mm. many of these problems that would come over a period of time. Mm. Now, this communal violence th at this particular stage, the government of India, I mean, let me say the government of Manipur had failed to see what was coming. Mm. You know, in, the, in 2016, there was division or bifurcation of uh, creation of new districts. Mm. And the Nagas and a few other... Seven districts were added. Seven districts were added. So during that time, the Nagas have opposed mm. the creation of new districts. Mm. The government failed to understand. The mm. government allowed things to happen. Mm. And now today, because of those creation of those type of districts, some people who were involved, uh, the let me say the government of Manipur, mm. they're being just, oh, now we understand why the Nagas were opposed against it. You know, like, like that, no? So like when this type of sensitivity comes to the government at the right time, mm. this could have been all avoided, mm. but they failed to do so. You're talking about developmental imbalance. Kukizo community is alleging that, alleging discrimination in budgetary allocation. They're yes, saying, yes. they're saying that look at infrastructure in, in the valley, look at infrastructure in hill districts. Do you, do you see that these concerns are valid? No, these are valid, valid things. Mm. The, the developmental uh, imbalance definitely has been there mm. over all these years. Mm. Uh, roads, you know, in, in a district, there, there is one main road mm. that go, goes on. Mm. And then, uh, you know, the, the uh, whereas in the valley, mm. all small localities are also being blacked up. Mm. Whereas in the hills, mm. only main district roads or major roads are being blacked up. Mm. So like, you know, and then uh, the funds, Alloc allocation of funds mm. are also that uh, you know it's supposedly they say about uh, uh, in the one of the datas that uh, one one of our MLAs have shown in the past mm. you know it's just about 10% of the allocation for the for the hills mm. 
whereas 10% of the total budget total of Manipur budget, total budget of the state's allocation hmm. so there, there are the the state you know territory hmm. if you look at the territory the hills occupy about 90% of the land of the land the valley about 10 just 10% so budgetary allocation budgetary is reversed. allocation is just the other way around hmm. yeah so and then when we come even to the population also the hmm. political representation also the hills have more than 20,000 square kilometers. Mm. The valley has just 22,000 square kilometers. Mm. The hills are represented by only 20, 20 MLAs mm. and the valley by 40. Mm. So when you actually look mm. at the at the, um, you know, the sizes, mm. the valley MLAs, they are looking after an approximately 50 square kilometers mm. whereas the hill MLAs are looking after 1000 square kilometers mm. so definitely when even in your MLA fund mm. MLA funds local area development funds when they are also given the same amount is given to the hills and also to the valley mm. so what will in 1000 square kilometers how much can he do mm. uh, and then compare to the 50 square kilometers that the same MLA mm. with the same fund is able to do so this imbalance definitely is there. Mm. So we have been raising that when there is delim delimitation, it should not only be in population or uh, population in, taken into consideration, the area should but also the, be taken the into geographical area also mm. should be taken into consideration. Mm. We do not say it should be equal, mm. no, mm. but uh, you know something should be done. There should be some index. Yes, some index. Mm. Mm. Uh, Metis have also raised concerns. They have raised concerns about. Uh, alleged illegal immigration from Myanmar and quote unquote narco terrorism. Do Nagas also share these concerns? See, uh, this narco terrorism is a word that has been coined and uh, come into light very recently. Hmm. So I really don't know. Yes, hmm. uh, many of those, uh, whoever is involved in uh, this narcotics. Hmm trade with narcotics mm. uh, i'm sure i know that many tribals mm. including some nagas are also involved mm. many muslims are involved but many metis are also involved mm. and of course cookies are also involved mm. now when it comes to poppy cultivation mm. poppy cultivation the because the tribals occupy the hills mm. where there is vast areas mm. of land mm. that is available for cultivation Yes, I think most of the cultivation are being done by the tribals. Mm. Uh, maybe uh, the bigger chunk would be by the cookies. Mm. Some Nagas are also doing the cultivation. But in general, the Nagas have uh, not allowed their people to do this cultivation. Mm. Maite is because of land constraints. They are not really doing any cultivation. Mm. But who buys the, the materials that come from this and who does the processing? Mm. Uh, you know, the people who are moneyed, the mm. people who have um, bigger power mm. uh, in their hands are the ones who are actually involved in this. Mm. These are allegations that have been given by uh, one of the uh, lady police officers, retired police officers. Town Jam Brinda, you yes, referring yes, to. Brinda. Mm. So that being so, I think that is not a very wrong observation mm. that has been through. Mm. And narco terrorism has come. Now, when you say about these people are uh, people who have come from uh, outside. Hmm. This is another concern raised by Metis. Yeah, another concern, concern raised about by alleged no, illegal immigrants. See, hmm. see, illegal immigrants, Nagas are also equally concerned hmm. because whenever these immigrants come, hmm. they come and occupy the Naga areas. Hmm. So this is one concern. Naga areas, could you specify district Senapati Ukrul you're talking about? Or? See, Nagas have always claimed that Senapati hmm. uh, Tamenglong, hmm. Ukrul, and Chandel. Hmm. This is the undivided. Hmm. Uh, these are Naga areas. Hmm. When you look at history, hmm. uh, the coming of the cookies into these areas are in recent times. Hmm. But uh, because we have already got a state, uh, how we discuss about this at a later point, uh, it, it remains to be negotiated and it remains to be seen. Hmm. But, um, you know, uh, the fact that this when immigrants or rather yeah when immigrants come mm. they they will occupy empty spaces mm. and so that is how it is being done and nagas have objected to it so in the 90s you have seen mm. there were a lot of uh, conflicts between these two communities mm. because of land mm. yeah this time around mm. with the metis the 
I think the the fact that uh, the some of the tribals, some of the cookies, they have come and settled in the Imphal Valley. Uh, a lot of new colonies and settlements and villages have been uh, set up in the valley area. But this valley area settlements are bought. They purchased it from the Métis. The owners of the land are Métis, so they bought it from them and they, they settled. So actually they are gi been given legal status of their occupation in that particular areas. Mm. But because uh, they allege that these people are coming from outside the boundaries. Mm. So that is why I do not know why all this conflict came and all of these uh, localities, all of the villages that were set up in the Imphal Valley, mm. they were being burned, raised to the ground. Mm. And it is a sad thing. Mm. Uh, but of course, now they have all been pushed to the hills. Mm. So which becomes a concern for Nagas. Mm. Because the, 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 now the battle, I mean, not the battle, now, now it is going to pressurize on the uh, Nagas. Mm. And so the UNC United Naga Council, they have also issued mm. a directive that no Naga areas, they, they will not allow resettlement of mm. this type of rehabilitation of the cookies. Mm. Those who are internally displaced should be allowed. Mm. So because now it is temporary, but by and by it will become permanent. Mm. And so this has always been the case in the past. Mm. And this has been uh, feared and, um, you know, uh, apprehensions are always there. Mm. In the Nagas. Home Minister Amit Shah also raised this concern saying that influx from Myanmar has increased anxieties among Métis. Yeah, not only Métis, also Nagas. Nagas. But it would be wrong to say, mm. it would be wrong to say that all of these are illegal, illegal, illegal immigrants. Mm. There's large numbers have come after the Yungta, uh, you know, occupation in the Myanmar side. Mm. And then, of course, during those days, also a lot of uh, uh, people from across the border belonging to this same ethnic group, they also kept on coming. Mm. And so it was basically, uh, the illegal immigration, let us call it illegal illegal immigrants. Mm. The term should be given only post uh, post the formation of the Manipur state. So 1949, 1949, 1949 the merger took place. It became in the part of the Union of India. Mm. And so if whatever happens after that, mm. then we can call them Ill illegal. Mm. But because the borders are either porous or borders are open. Mm. So they, they find ease to come in and move in and out. And then those who, who move in from that side, mm. I'll tell you, there are also Nagas who come in, mm. but they always go back. Nagas don't have the habit of uh, staying mm. wherever they go and they go. So for both communities, Nagas and, and Kukizo community, they have transnational ethnic kinship. Yes, yes. There are Nagas also who stay in Myanmar. In Myanmar side. So those Nagas who are in the Myanmar side, mm. they stay, they, they come for trade, they come for education, they mm. come for whatever, but they go back. Mm. They don't stay. Mm. Maybe out of 100, maybe 0.1 person may stay But you back. don't think this is the case with cookies but, community? But in the cookies, mm. whoever have come, they come and build temporary sheds and mm. then from there they, they built up and then mm. They have become citizens mm. in many cases, mm. settlers in many mm. cases. Mm. So that is the difference. Mm. Uh, now we are moving towards the conclusion of this interview. Few days ago, 40 MLAs from Manipur uh, uh, submitted a memorandum to Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The delegation also included eight Naga MLAs. Four were from your party. Uh, and in some circles, uh, this meeting was presented as show of strength for Birin Singh government. Uh, does it not mean that Naga MLAs are supporting the state government, though you're very critical of Birin Singh government saying that it's his doing that violence has reached this level. And later, United Naga Council, they pulled up eight MLAs saying that uh, they don't see eye to eye. I mean, the civil society group from Nagas and Naga MLAs, they differ on various issues. Do you think both groups are on the same page or there are differences how they approach this conflict? You know, see, at as, as uh, these differences have come in the open, mm. uh, there is no point of hiding the fact. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, the whatever the Naga MLAs did, mm. they did it with, a, with an intention. Maybe they have not fully understood the things, uh, the, the, uh, their actions in the eye of what the UNC has been thinking. Mm. And so it is unfortunate. Mm. 
uh, but they also did have some intent mm. thinking that it may do something good mm. but you know these intentions are being not communicated and they're being misunderstood mm. and so they're being pulled up by the UNC. I think uh, hopefully sense will prevail. Mm. Uh, this should not l lead us to any division. Mm. Uh, we all of us Nagas mm. whether elected whether it is in the civil societies or whether it's elsewhere mm. we also have the same vision mm. only thing is the way we try to express it comes out differently mm. so sometimes uh, some things are being misunderstood mm. so hopefully it will be resolved but but do you think naga mlas eight naga mlas they favor the Biryan singh government i'll tell you it was to me i felt that they were pushed mm. to go to delhi mm. pushed by whom by Biryan singh definitely mm. yeah so, because they were in the coalition, they thought that as a, as a ruling party, a ruling MLA should go to Delhi. Mm. So, that was the idea. But when they, ultimately the papers were being signed, mm. I think those created the actual confusion. Mm. So, hopefully it will be resolved. One of the, one of the demands of Kukizo community is, one of the foremost demands, I would say, separate administration. They want total separation from the Manipur government. Mm -hmm. Nagas have been demanding Greater Nagalim for so long. I mean, Kukizo community's territorial claims, how do they overlap with Naga's claims? See, that is, that is, I don't know. Yeah, that is something that we, it is a little complex. Hmm. It is very complex. Hmm. Uh, the territorial claims are, because over the years, Kukis have come and either pushed the Nagas. Hmm and then they live there mm. or they paid taxes to the uh, tribal chiefs mm. and then they were staying there but when their population overwhelmed the local naga chiefs mm. then they refused to pay tax mm. and they started uh, pushing pushing them out by and by they demanded for a cookie homeland mm. which is why in the 80s there were a lot of conflicts mm. yeah these are in the well early known. 90s also yeah then later on in the 90s mm. uh, it became an up conflict mm. and so in the early days it was uh, the word of mouth blockades and counter blockades and mm. things like that and then mm. a lot of uh, this unity was there mm. but uh, in the 90s of course mm. uh, it was a real open mm. armed conflict mm. which was unfortunate but now it is more than 20, 30 years, more than 30 years, I should say, since it began. Mm. It came subsided. Mm. But, you know, that uh, whatever was there built up within, mm. it had not completely died out. So there is a lot of need for the cookies and also the Nagas mm. to come sit together to on tables and then try to understand each other, try mm. to see how best it can be resolved. Mm. See, every issue can be solved on the table. Mm. And so, be it the cookies, be it the nagas, I think we must come to the table to resolve this conflict. Mm. And which is why now this Mete and the naga, uh, the cookie conflict also, mm. I'm sure it can be resolved. Mm. There only need to be an eye-to-eye -eye meeting table, sitting across the table, uh, mm. sort out differences, and then we can definitely do mm. it. Mm. But the other communities will not do this only because they say this fellow is partisan, he is still leading and he is still doing the same things mm. as he started, since mm. he started. And so unless he goes, we will not come. So that is clear from the cookie side. Mm. So the central government, they want peace. Mm. We want peace. Nagas want peace. Mm. Maites also do want peace. Mm. Cookies also do not want to continue on with this conflict. They want peace. Mm. but the center must make a conducive atmosphere so that mm. peace will prevail. Do you think Naga should also be made part of these negotiations that the government is holding with uh, insurgent groups from Kuki side? Ye even yesterday, Sioux groups, uh, groups which are under sus suspension of operations, uh, they met uh, uh, home ministry officials. It is, it is the wisdom of Do you think Naga the, should also be, be should become part of it is the, the wisdom. It is the wisdom of the central government who is uh, mm. leading all these uh, negotiations. Mm. But by and large, whatever negotiations that is being held be between the cookies and the central uh, government. Indian government mm. is also bilateral. Mm. At, uh, at one point of time, it was a trapezoid talk, including mm. the government of Manipur. But because of the situation created in the Imphal Valley, it has become a tri bi bilateral. Whereas the Naga peace talk was bilateral right from the beginning. Hmm. It was expected that we will in include another international, a third party. Hmm. But then that never happened. Hmm. 
And so now it is also a bilateral. Mm. So I think wisdom prevails. Mm. I think uh, it is good. You think it should remain bilateral? It should remain bilateral so long as discussions between the government and the this groups, groups are concerned. Ah. But it will be only wise mm. because there will be conflict after whatever solutions that you are trying to bring out. Mm. After that, later on, it will come to the land issue again. Land yeah. so separation that, is the yeah, main demand. That land issue will come again. And because of its overlapping nature, mm. how do you resolve it? Mm. So only the parties concerned should come and resolve it. Mm. Because separate administration is the main demand and separate administration overlaps with Naga's demand. So yeah. should Naga's be also part of this, these, these talks? See, the Naga peace talk also is going on. You know what its demands are. Mm. They also want integration of all the Naga uh, Inhabited areas, areas. Inhabited areas. Hmm. And then uh, uh, then also, the they also want various other issues to be resolved, hmm. political issues. So when those are there, um, it is up to the government of India and the, the negotiating parties to resolve it. Hmm. And I'm sure it should remain bilateral. Hmm. And then uh, sense prevail hmm. and good, uh, you know, bring back peace to our whole people. Hmm. Have Naga peace talks uh, reached stalemate because it seems that the government might use Manipur crisis to further delay Naga peace talks. Yeah, I wish, uh, you know, issues will always keep on coming. Hmm. And there was a time when uh, because of the Kashmir issue, hmm. this was also put pushed backward again. Hmm. And now because of this Manipur issue, if, if it keeps on pushing back like this, uh, frustration will go grow deeper and deeper, hmm. and which will only complicate the issues. Hmm. So the government of India taking the whatever is at hand, mm. make the best use of this, make the best time and then try to resolve it, hammer out the issues. Mm. There will be differences, but how best to resolve these issues, the governments of India should use its best wisdom, mm. pull in intellectuals mm. and then try and see how best we can resolve it. Mm. I'm sure it can be. Uh, the immediate trigger for this current conflict was uh, tribal groups opposition to Metis demand for ST reservation. Uh, Nagas were also part of uh, part of the tribal group which oppose Methi's demand. Do Nagas still firm uh, still stand on 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 their opposition to Methi's? Methi is demanding it is their inherent democratic right. Hmm. They want it. They have no reason. Not uh, I mean we have no reason to object to that. Hmm. But then uh, it is only up to the government of India, hmm. the authority that will give or not give. It is up to them to use their wisdom to see how it happens. Mm. You know, we are already feeling like the oppressed people, we are the marginalized group of people, mm. and the Métis are a very highly developed and civilized people, mm. very, you know, commercially or intellectually or whatever, they are very highly developed. Mm. And if those people are brought in the same uh, area, in the same field, then it becomes a problem. So those that the government of India has to think. Mm. In this violence, I think this is, I was in Manipur. I, for me, that was the worst violence I've seen in my lifetime. Uh, we have seen reports of uh, two women being paraded naked. They were groped. Uh, we have seen child uh, children being burnt alive. We have seen uh, people whose, whose skulls were cracked open. Uh, more than 160 people have died. Thousands have been displaced. Uh, distrust among Kuki, Zo and Metis uh, runs deeper and deeper with each passing day. What's your formula to bring peace to the valley and hills? I think not everyone of the Metis are militant. Hmm. Not every one of the cookies are militant. We have wise people in all of these societies who are mature politically and also socially. I think our people should come together at some level and start the peace process. Hmm. And in that, whether it should be without the government or with the government, hmm. uh, we should start at some level. So. We only hope that the government of India is sensitive and then uh, uh, once once a sensitive uh, issue is being dealt wisely mm. and sternly, once that happens, I think it will definitely take the peace process forward. Mm. See, presently, if you look at the deep hurt, the deep wounds that has gone so deep, mm. you know, it will take many years to heal. Mm. It will take a long, long time. We cannot expect normalcy to come back soon. And so we must allow the fact that that has happened allow cooling time mm. but during this cooling time this type of uh, 
uh, stray incidences should be completely stopped. And we just, you know, since they're not being stopped, the problem continues to remain. Mm. So this, once they're completely stopped, over time, I'm sure that healing will come. Mm. Mr. Fose, thank you. Thank you so much for such a candid interview. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. We could bring such interviews because we are paid by subscribers. Uh, until last week, we were also, we were in Manipur. Uh, we did a lot of video stories, text stories. You can go to newslaundry.com and click on Anatomy of Manipur Violence and check our reports. Thank you so much for subscribing to News Laundry. Journalism at News Laundry is powered by the public. Because when the public pays, the public is served. Visit newslaundry.com slash subscription and pick a payment plan of your choice. Pay to keep news free and independent. Your future, and indeed the future of democracy, depends on it.